Hey everybody, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Let's talk about the Lightroom Publish services as well as the normal export. When you're going to use one versus the other. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about how I choose to export my images. Uh, which way to export them, the file formats, that kind of thing. So uh, I think it'll be a good video for you. So stick around. So first, Publishing Manager. What is it? Well, the main reason to use the Publishing Manager is when you want to keep Lightroom and that publishing service, whether it be Flickr, Facebook, uh, your hard drive as it lists here, um, Picasa Web, which I'll go over, or an FTP server, in sync with Lightroom. So if you would ever need to edit those photos, re-upload for any reason, that's when you're going to want to uh, use these publishing services. All right. As you can see here, I really only use Flickr. In fact, I have I set up the FTP one just so I could show you how to use it. Um, but that's it. Uh, the Flickr one is really the only one that I use. I don't upload photos to Facebook, um, and I don't use the hard drive, which again I'll, I'll get into a little bit later. But uh, anyway, it's really easy to set all of these up. You know, super simple, super easy. So I'm going to go over that with you. Uh, first is uh, Flickr. Now, what will happen is, since this is already set up, it's going to give you show you a button here to authorize, and it's the same with Facebook. Uh, you know, it's going to see if it's already been authorized. Basically, you're going to click this little authorize on Facebook button. It's going to take you to the Facebook page or to the Flickr page or Picasa, whoever it is, and it's going to authorize that application, and then you'll be able to automatically upload to that. All right. Uh, next thing is set how you want the titles. If it gives you that option uh, when updating, you definitely want to replace that title. File naming, I wouldn't change the file names personally. Settings, how big is the file, what type of file. Now different accounts uh, will allow you to upload, upload different types of files. For example, I think Flickr, uh, nope, it's only a JPEG, but in FTP here, I can choose any type of file to upload. So some of them will give you a choice besides JPEG, but others like Facebook will only up, uh, allow you to upload a, uh, a JPEG file. You can choose the size of the file or the quality of it. And of course, the image size. I suggest for most published services, uh, 700 pixels. Like for my website, I usually put them up at 700. But then from Flickr, I actually have that set at... Oops. Uh, don't say whoops on uh, for Flickr I actually have it set at a thousand pixels so that when it goes full screen it's a little bit bigger uh, and it fills that entire screen which is what I want so um, Flickr let's see oh we were down here on sizing output sharpening you always want to sharpen your photos on export for the final display or whether it's a print going to go to print whether it's going to go up on the web so you want to sharpen it for the screen and choose the amount if you've already added some sharpening within the develop module you probably will only want to add low uh, but some images you might need to go either standard or high I like to leave it on standard that's good for the majority of my images uh, metadata I leave as normal watermarking definitely like the watermark an image in the bottom corner and so that's what that's for typically I'd actually have it set on that one and then privacy and safety all right you can set that in some not others it just depends on the settings like for example in FTP publisher you're not gonna have those settings because if it's up on your FTP it's probably public anyway all right or you might have a, your privacy or your controlling that security in another way with FTP all right hard drive when would you use hard drive uh, I don't use this one at all I don't see myself using that in the future but if you have a certain set of images that you are uh, making tweaks to a lot or you do a lot of stuff with or you're constantly um, ordering prints from that kind of thing then you probably or even printing those images yourself if you do uh, printing in-house then you'll probably want to use this hard drive publisher because it's going to be really easy to find those they're going to be files that you you know you might need to open up in a different program for one reason or another and so that's when you would use that hard drive uh, personally again I don't use it um, I think it's kind of a waste 
because I would rather see you just go to file and the, use the normal export dialog box and then just add them to the catalog and manage them within the catalog as a regular additional image rather than the publish as hard drive. I think that works a little bit better. Now I promise you that I talk about how I export and what I do with everything. Well, number one, if I am uploading photos for print, and uh, you guys should all know, know by now that I use Miller's Lab. By the way, you can follow them on Twitter. I think it's at Miller's Lab. Um, I just saw a tweet from them. Hold on a second. Uh, yep. Um, not sure. Not sure. It doesn't matter. I think it's at Miller's Lab on Twitter. Anyway, a really good lab. When I export my pictures for uh, to upload to them, I export them temporarily all right it's not a permanent thing I always want to go back to my original raw files and export again if I need another copy of a photo that, to be uploaded all right so um, that's why when I export photos let me see if I can find this folder real quick for you actually there and there's this temporary folder okay this temp Lightroom export folder that's where everything goes for me and that's how I have my uh, everything set here um, or most of the time, most of them, actually, they're a uh, specific folder. There it is. Oops, nope. That's another client folder. So typically that works. <laughs> it figures it didn't work this time, right? Um, anyway, I export everything to this temporary folder location. All right. I'm not going to save those additional JPEGs, wasting space. Um, typically, I'll clean this folder out about once a month. And so, you know, go back, ditch everything, because I'll just re-export it again. It's really not a big deal. I'd much rather do that in case I find that I want to make another tweak or another anything, um, whatever it is. It only takes a couple seconds for me to, to, to export a picture anyway. I've got a pretty fast computer, so it, it's, there's really no need to be saving those and storing all those. So uh, let's go over the rest of my export settings here. Um, when I'm uploading to Miller's or whatever the uh, to have them printed, basically, um, I won't rename. Um, typically, again, I'll, I'll choose that folder, uh, that temporary folder that I showed you. And existing, I'll probably want to overwrite. Okay, won't add to the catalog because again, these are temporary files to me, and why would I add them to the catalog? All right, won't change the file name, file settings, JPEG. SRGB, that's a that's the key right there. I actually had someone ask me the other day. I have, you know, my, my photos look great in Lightroom, but when I upload them to the web or view them in my browser or order them, they look dull. That's probably because you have your color space set as either Adobe 98, ProPhoto RGB, or some other color space. All right. For any kind of a web, any kind of print, you want your final output color space to be sRGB. All right. If it's going to say a Photoshop, if you're going to put it into Photoshop to do some more editing, then you're going to want to put it into Pro Photo because it's a bigger color space. It's a larger bucket to allow all of your data to fill and to fit in there. All right. So uh, for this instance, we're going to choose sRGB. Now uh, I just haven't updated my. Um, uh, my settings here I typically would uncheck this video files thing if you wanted to limit your file size you can but for a big image that's going to be uploaded for print I don't want to do that alright sizing 4000 pixels is a good size for just about everything that I do even up to say 16 by 20 20 by 30 4000 pixels will cover just about everything now to me a minimum for say an 8 by 10 print is probably somewhere around 2500 pixels on the long side and by the way, I'm going to mention this. A lot of people I've heard lately uh, actually are using the term DPI incorrectly. It's actually PPI when you're talking about an image. Okay. And they also refer to the image resolution, which actually doesn't matter. People that don't know any better are going to say, yeah, send me a picture that's 300 DPI. Well, guess what? I can export a, picture, a, a photo that is one pixel by one pixel at 300 dpi and it's going to be way too small to print or do anything with so if someone says to you hey what's the you know what send me a, a high-res picture for say a banner or a sign or a print or 
whatever it is. Oh, I needed a 300 DPI. DPI is irrelevant for most things. Okay, what really matters is the sizing. All right, the pixel dimensions, the width and the height of the image. So what I will do is I'll say to them, okay, how big of an image do you need? And they're going to say it's 300 pixel, 300 DPI, and that is irrelevant. So what you're going to say is, what are the long side pixel dimensions? All right, and that's when you get that 3,000, 4,000, something like that. Again, 4,000 is usually big enough for most things. Output sharpening, definitely. Um, I always I like the matte version here, and again, standard is is usually good for me. Metadata I want it included. It's just normal setting, and most things for print I won't add a watermark uh, when it's going to print. And then post processing, if I want to show it in Explorer, I can do that, and it'll pop up afterwards. Um, oops, I should have done that. Anyway. Um, so that is my, what I'm sending out for print. All right. Sometimes, as you see here, I will up res a file a little bit. If I did need something really big, I'll also export it in a 16-bit PSD if I need to edit it. Uh, some other ones here is a 4,000 pixel 16-bit PSD file if I needed it, or just an 8-bit if it's if I'm just doing a little bit of editing where I know I'm I'm not gonna have to do a lot to it. Um, 1,000 pixels, there's my one that I would use for uploading to the web. Um, then I also have a watermark one here, say a 700 pixel watermark or a 1,000 pixel watermark that actually adds my logos. And so it's really quick for me to be able to export a file, and there it is, into my temp Lightroom export folder. And bam, in three seconds, two, one, there's my picture exported with my logo on it although I have the wrong logo on here because I'm trying to rush through this video for you so uh, anyway it's a really good way to keep yourself going to keep your workflow going um, I think I got everything that I wanted to talk about here today let's see we went over the published services when to use it when I don't use it oh I know what it was I wanted to show you other publishing services this guy, Jeffrey Friedel, I hope I said the name right. If not, sorry. Uh, he had, makes a lot of Lightroom plugins. And one of his plugins is Picasa. Um, then he has other ones here PhotoSafe, SmugMug, JF Tree. I don't know what that is. Um, let's see, Picasa. So he has a lot of different plugins that you can use. They're all very reasonably priced. Some of them are free. Some of them are trial. Um, actually, I had this Picasso web installed, and it actually expired because I was going to do this video a long time ago. But uh, basically what happens is, is it, it limits you to 10 photos at a time. Not a big deal to me because, you know, as you see, I only have no photos in there <laughs> because I just wanted to install it and look at it to make sure it works well. But it does work well. I do like it. The way you install those... You know, um, I what I do is I take all my plugins and I put them in my My Documents folder. Um, the the once I extract it, then I copy it over to My Documents folder. Then I install it. And the way you install it is go to your Plugin Manager, and then you want to add, hit the Add button, and you choose that folder from within your My Documents. That's where I prefer to keep them rather than extracting them to the desktop or anything like that. And so that's the way I like to go. As you see here, Users Greg Documents, which is my My Documents folder, Lightroom Plugins, which is a subfolder that I have it in, and then that Flickr Resync or whatever. This is another cool plugin, a Flickr Resync. Um, I have multiple catalogs, so some images might have been added before or after. And so this Resync plugin is actually really nice because it'll go back and it'll actually find all of those old um, images, uh, those old images, and match them up actually by time is the way that it works so it's a really cool plugin especially if you use Flickr a lot in Lightroom so it'll it'll you know match them up and, and go back and forth cool plugin um, so here's that Picasso web one again Jeffrey Friedel you can pick it up it's not real expensive as you see mine expired I don't even use it and so um, I'll put a link on the website so that you can head over there and the other place to find a lot of good plugins is actually on Adobe's website um, here's actually the ones from Jeffrey again 
and some of his. He's got 21 plugins up here, so that's a lot. And geocoding support, which I actually do use, and uh, I actually purchased that one. Uh, is it listed here? Yep, JF geocoding support. There it is, right there. Okay. Um, he's got all kinds of plugins that are in here. Here's his own Facebook, Zenfolio, Smug Mug, Picasso. So he's got a bunch of them in here. His own Flickr plugin. So, and actually, this is just a Flickr plugin, not necessarily a publish. So uh, you do have to be careful of which one that you're buying, whether it's just an export or whether it is for the publishing. All right. So um, check them out. Again, I'll put links to that stuff up on the website so you can take a look at them. Any questions, comments, you know, which one do you use? Do you use the publish services? Is there something that you use it for that I don't realize? Um, maybe you can change my mind. You never know. I'd love to hear your questions or comments. Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Thanks, guys. See ya.